the first couple times I swam, I went to the gym and I was like, Hey, listen, I'm swimming. You don't, you don't have to come rescue me. <laughs> I'm really just trying to swim. Welcome to the Effortless Swimming Podcast, the show that helps swimmers and triathletes love the water, become a better swimmer, and live a better life. Here's your host, Brenton Ford. Welcome to the Effortless Swimming Podcast. On today's episode, I have Jason Key, who's an age group triathlete based out of Texas. And over the last four years, Jason's gone from being a 150 swimmer per 100 down to a 130 swimmer per 100. And on today's episode, you're going to learn some of the feelings and frustrations that you can expect to go through as you are working on your technique. You're going to find out some of the technical changes that Jason's made over the last couple of years to help him bring his 100 pace down by 20 seconds and what Jason is, is working on now to get down to a 125 pace per 100. So let's listen in. This is Jason talking about when he first got started with us. Yeah, well, I I uh, started effortless swimming. I was looking back at my records, and it was like 2015. So, and that was after about six months of trying to swim and really trying to make a difference. And um, and I'll tell you what, the first couple times I swam, I went to the gym and I was like, "Hey, listen, I'm swimming." You. <laughs> You don't have to come rescue me. <laughs> I'm really just trying to swim. <laughs> and uh, it was a struggle. I mean, for the first year or so uh, in 2015, I mean, I was like at 151, 145 uh, per 100 meters. And I was working really, really hard. And that's what kind of pushed me towards effortless swimming. I mean, I was looking at your your clips that you had and the different things and it's just everything just kind of made sense and it really helped me a lot and over the last uh couple of years what what were those things that you've that you were focusing on so um you know what were some of those aspects of the stroke that um that you were looking to to improve and and what was it that sort of made uh, made everything click for you well what what really helped a lot was your swim analysis um, you know, kind of looking at different parts of my stroke. I don't think before, before I had your swim analysis, like, you know, just like everybody else, I felt like I was just swimming perfect. Um, I, w I know I didn't look perfect and, um, you know, I'm, a, you know, being an age grouper and it was limited time and working hard and a family and stuff. I mean, I would work really, really hard and, I, I'm not opposed to hard work and I was really struggling. And so then I, I came to effortless, uh, effortless swimming and then I got your, your, your video analysis. And then what really helped was the way that you're able to like break down my stroke and not only just like point it out, but really kind of help me appreciate, and understand what I should do because, you know, in between the times that I'm not sending in about video analysis, like I'll have a daughter or another swimmer like record me. And so I can kind of use those tools that you kind of taught me to, you know, help me with my arm placement um, and really kind of work on those aspects. I feel like I'm doing that. I, that I know I'm not doing, but I feel like it. And so I can kind of take those things and really kind of perfect those a little bit more. And that helps, that helps a lot. I think that's one of the biggest things that I see with the swimmers like yourself who take that next step and, and, and they get to that next level of, of improvement or, or speed. And it's, it's really when you can start to mix, uh, you can combine the perception of what you're doing with what you're actually doing. And often it takes just some recording, some video of yourself to be able to, to do that because it doesn't matter how experienced you are in, uh, in the water, what you what you perceive that you're doing is is often very very different especially the first time and then i think the more that you the more analysis that you do or the more videoing you do you start to get a much better sense of of where you actually are and uh, you know and so you're sending videos sort of every maybe two to three months i think in the beginning and then it sort of every maybe six months five to six months um, so it's sort of spread yeah. out, but I know, and, and that's off, that's what we often see is because, you know, you can just take that quick video and you can see for yourself whether you're doing the things that you're trying to, to do or not. And you can make the changes based on, on that. And I think you said you did a time trial 
not long ago, a 3,200-metre time trial. Um, what was your average pace there for that? Yeah, um, I did – I got down to a minute 31 per 100, and that was a time trial I did about three or four weeks ago, and I'm still making improvements. I mean, uh, I swam today. And I started dropping down into a minute 28, a minute 27. And, and so, I mean, I'm seeing improvements. I mean, it's phenomenal, but I mean, it's been incrementally like since 2015, it it has not been all at once by any means. I mean, I was kind of looking back and in 2016, I was like around, I was in the minute 40 range, 2017, I was like the high minute thirties. 2018, I was like the mid 130 range, 134, 135, and now I'm getting down to 131, and it's and it's just it's been real helpful. And oh, one other thing that's real helpful too, and I got this from your video is, and this taught me a lot, and I see it in other people, is my flexibility. I've been working on quite a bit because one thing I've noticed that like when I first started swimming, like I really couldn't get into the right position to kind of like to get the right catch because my arms weren't moving right or they weren't, you know, they weren't straightening out. And by just working on flexibility, you know, I'm 47 and working on flexibility to get in the right position to be able to catch it and pull that has made a huge, indif- uh, a, 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 you know, a huge change in my swim because when I first started, I didn't realize it, but I couldn't even get into the right position. It was almost impossible for me to get the right stroke if I can't even get to the right position. Yeah, that's that's interesting. What what have you been doing to improve your flexibility? Well, one of the things. Uh, well, I noticed from your video by uh, by uh, Fatel, you know, he would, you know, he'd lay on his stomach and he'd put his arms up and he'd show like what angle he could get his arms up. And so where I noticed it is on the front top of my shoulders on each one. That's, that's my tight spot. And so one of the things I'll do is like I'll lay on a, 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 a roller, a tube. I'll lay on it my spine and I'll lay on my back. And then I kind of put my arms out to the side and put them up over my head and kind of rotate them and try to hit that position. And I'll even have my daughter hold my arms a little bit. And I don't do it every day, but maybe like, you know, two or three times a week for about 10 minutes, just to, especially after a hard swim that day um, or the night before. And that really helps. Um, that helps loosen me up and it helps when I get into to water um, quite a bit. So now I can work on my pull. Yeah, that's, that's excellent. It's, it makes such a difference. Even, as you said, three times a week of 10 minutes. Uh, same thing with strength training. Like I, I've been taking these these younger kids sort of twice a week um, here just locally and we, I've been doing a little bit of strength work with them about, oh, it's only about a 25, 30 minute workout, but it just gives them this this base level of, of strength and it's the same thing with, with flexibility is you just want this sort of base level that makes a huge difference if you're not doing any at the moment. So you don't need to do three times an hour a week. It's, it's just that little bit can really change things, especially if you're on the bike, you're in TT position, even running, the shoulders get so tight. And I experienced that when I was doing triathlon a couple of years ago, that it just really changes the way that you you feel. So you just want to make sure that you're keeping on top of that mobility, which, um, yeah, which is makes a big, big difference. And, you know, sometimes when I'm running clinics, we'll do like one of the first drills we do is just this really simple front kick drill with the arms out in front. And one of the first things we work on is that train tracks position with the hands directly in line with the shoulders and with about you know sort of one in ten two out of ten people they can't actually get their arms straight because they're so tight through their um through their upper traps and um so tight through the shoulders and that's really limiting from a drag perspective but it's also going to be limiting from a, a catch and pull perspective so um i'd be curious as to, as to see what how much of an impact that actually has. And I mean, I've seen it have a big, big impact with a lot of swimmers, but um, yeah, it'd be interesting to see what, what percentage of improvement comes from just the, the mobility alone uh, and then the, the technical side of things too. So that's, um, yeah, that's really good to, good to hear. And um, 
it's not you know it's not this big big overnight change that you're going to have with your with your swimming it's just this incremental improvement and to see that continual improvement i think is it's even sort of more exciting because if you were to go from 150 down to 130 in the space of two weeks it's uh you know it's just not it's just not how it works um even though it would be nice but it's just that continual improvement and what do you what do you see the next stage of improvement where do you see that coming from if to get down towards that 125 mark well when I when I got to the 130s, what really I started really focusing on quite a bit was kind of like the connectivity. Uh, I mean, <laughs> you 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 you've called me out on it in the past of you know being too mechanical, you know, in my swim, and I've noticed it. And one thing I noticed that when I hit my 130s, um, my I was a lot more fluid in my swim. Mm. And that helped a lot when I was, I had the flexibility, I could get my arm in the right position, my kick, um, on slower, you know, easy, uh, sets of 50 or easy set of 50 or easy set of hundred. I mean, um, I do like a two beat kick, um, but it would be, it'd be easy. Um, and then when I'd go a little bit faster, I'd go up to a, a four beat kick and then that four beat kick is what helped me kind of with my timing. That's what pulled everything together. If I notice if I go to a six beat kick, I'm just, I'm just kicking. I'm not even, nothing's tied together. My legs are just going crazy, but the four beat kick, it really helped me in, in, in that continuity in, in terms of all my timing and being less mechanical and more fluid. And that helped my time immensely. Yeah, that's that's a really big one, and I've started. I think you were probably one of the first um, sort of guys in the the membership who went from that two beat to four beat kick, and I've started to sort of test it out or or have other swimmers try it out and and see how they go with it. Because especially when you want to pick up the pace, a two beat kick can be quite challenging to be able to pick up the pace, but with a four beat kick, it's often just as easy in terms of effort and heart rate. But it gives you this much yeah. better fluency and rhythm in the stroke and, and that overall connection. And I think um, it's really it's a really good one to um, to try out. And for anyone who's sort of listening, uh, I did a video on YouTube which which explains it. It's called I think two beat, four beat, or six beat kick. And uh, yeah, that four beat kick is is easy to do. It helps sitting sit the body a little bit higher as well. And um, and that connection that you you mentioned. And I I really like how you. Um, we're able to get to that point of of swimming with with rhythm. So uh, it happens a lot when you're concentrating on on these technical changes. It can be hard to kind of let things go and be loose and and fluid in the water. But as soon as, as soon as you get those technical changes, like like you have and you've locked them in, then it's about just kind of trusting yourself and trusting the the muscle memory to do what it's been trained to do, and to then just think about pace and and rhythm when you're going at that faster faster race pace and it was a similar thing i I did a sort of second analysis for um taron giselle who's the triathlon taron on youtube and it's the same thing he was just looking a little bit overly controlled and mechanical and so the sort of next thing that i said to him was all right now it's time to to let things go and uh and to trust yourself a bit and I, i think that's where where you can really see a big change in in speed so that's um that's exciting and and for you you've got a couple of races coming up where you'll get to sort of test all this out and see where you're at uh, in terms of racing so what what have you got coming up that uh yeah that uh is on the race calendar well the beginning of april i've got oceanside 70.3 coming up i'm real excited about that one um and then in the fall i think it's october i'm doing waco 70.3 in texas so those will both be some really nice races. Yeah, fantastic. And um, and in terms of sort of training, how often do you get in the pool every week, and how far is each swim on average? Um, I'm on average I'm about three times a week. Um, there are some weeks when I'm really focusing on my swim. I'll do four times. Um, sometimes not very often I'll do only two times when I'm like having a hard, like a hard run week and I'm really turning up the dial on the run or the bike. 
but it's mostly between three to four. And that getting in that extra swim has really helped a lot. And, and how that's helped a lot was, and you've emphasized it before, uh, you know, well, an example is, is my daughter swims, uh, Carice, and she's in high school, she's 15. And I've noticed, I mean, they swim like a minute nine, a minute 10 per hundred meters. But when they swim, they do it like with very little effort. And, and I just picture myself huffing and puffing and racing, trying to get to a minute 30. <laughs> and I know I'm doing something wrong. I just know it because they do, I mean, they're tired, but they just do it so effortlessly. And so that's really what caused me to, you know, really ask you a lot of questions in terms of form, trying to get my body placement, because I've, I've come to realize that I work, I don't work near as hard at racing at a, a minute 30 than when I did at a minute 50. I worked way harder then, and I was going way less and I was just out of breath. Now I just have to swim further to get the same workout because it really is, it's still hard, but it's not as difficult, especially using, you know, soft hands and trying to not, ex you know, expel any miscellaneous energy and just trying to use just the right amount of energy and trying to be relaxed has really helped like immensely and made a huge impact. Do you feel that at, when you're around 150, did it seem like 130 was, would be a bit far-fetched because of the effort that you had to put in to get to 150? Did it feel like, you know, I can't possibly go any harder. How is 130 achievable? Well, that, that's, that's been my problem. I mean, since the last four years, I think what's changed has been, I mean, it has been my fitness. That's improved a little bit. Um, and my flexibility, but I think the biggest change has been like the mindset of, you know, a full, how much form is really that much of an impact and how much, you know, like you've said before, you know, you only have propulsion and you only have drag. Those are, those are really the two things. And so I've been able to kind of like really break those down. And when I've been able to kind of streamline them a little bit better, my, my resistance is less. And I've been able to work on my pull with high elbow a little bit better. And so I've been able to utilize that energy a little bit more. And it's just made it drastically, drastically easier. And I'll have other people say, well, you know, they'll make a comment, you know, like, how do you, you know, how do you do that? I mean, that's crazy. You must swim all the time and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, I mean, I wish I could explain to them the process because it's all been a mindset of what it really takes. I thought when I was at 150, I thought it was, it was almost impossible for me to ever get to 130 because I can't work any harder. I can't, I mean, I'm, mm. <laughs> I'm giving all my effort, you know, it's there. My heart rate was high. I was getting after it, but it wasn't about the harder work. It was about working smarter. And that, that's, that's why I went to you. Yeah. That's, that's really interesting. Um, and you, know, you think of it in terms of someone who's, who's swimming at a 110 pace for, say, 400 meters com yeah, compared to 150. It's not, it's not like that they're putting in any more effort. They might even be – the 110 swimmer might be using a lot less effort. And it is, it is just technique and, and form. And, I mean, obviously, fitness, fitness is, uh, is required. Uh, fitness and strength is required. But, uh, yeah, that's, that's the thing. And I think it's um, – it, it, it appears like the those little wins that you have where you, you might get a couple seconds faster overall with your pace. It's like you get these little wins and that builds up and it snowballs and then it just sort of turns into this thing where you where you believe you can get to that that next step. Whereas if you look down if you look down the track to think of one thirty, you go no, nah, that's not that's not possible. But all it is is you know get down to one forty six, one forty seven, and then and then onwards from there. So. It's um, it's really great to see, and I mean that it all just comes down to the work and the the focus that you've that you've put in. So um, well done on on that. It's it's really good to see, and it's what I I just love to I love to see that with the swimmers that I I work with. And um, it's yeah, you know, and you and you're not finished yet. There's still still a lot more to come. So thanks very much for um for joining me on the podcast. And is there what would you say to someone out there who might be around you know the 150 two minute plus mark? Um, who wants to improve their swimming, what are some of the things that they should expect to go through maybe in terms of so, you know, mentally? What, what are some of the things that they'll 
that they might go through that they need to maybe push through and, and what advice can you give them? Oh, I can tell you they're going to go through frustration because they're going to feel like they are like doing everything they can. They're going to feel like they're doing the work and it's not paying off. And, you know, by getting a couple video analysis from you and then, and then like if they're working on arm entry, hand entry, you know, have a friend record them a little bit more often than they'd send you a video and, and see if they're really doing it. Um, and then if, if they're not doing it, swim a 25 and then make a tweak and watch it on the other side of the pool. And then if you're not doing it, make another tweak and watch it on the other side of the pool again after that video. And you'll learn that arm and uh, that, that entry and or it could be body position or something like that. And then every couple months sends you a video or, you know, whatever the frequency might be, because it's those little tweaks that you think you're doing, but you're really not doing. And that's been my hardest frustration. And, and now that I'm aware of it, what it takes, I think getting for me, getting to 120 is definitely within reach now because I've busted through that frustration. And I know it's not necessarily working harder. It's just kind of working smarter and being more efficient. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, Jace, thanks so much for, for being on the podcast. It's been great to uh, to chat to you. And in the next six, 12 months and on from there, I um, yeah can only uh, imagine where you can get to. So we'll have to do a have to do a comparison video for, for YouTube from where you started to, to where you are now and um, just sort of show what's what's possible. I think it's I think it's really, really exciting. So thank you again and good luck for your races. Awesome. Thank you, Brandon. I appreciate the time. Thanks for listening to the Effortless Swimming Podcast. If you'd like us to help you become a faster, more efficient swimmer, go to www.effortlessswimming.com.